Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Marilyn and my channel's Making with Marilyn. Now I have made stickers maybe three or four times before with my Cricut, but I wanted to try out some new vinyl sticker paper. I thought maybe that would make an improvement. So I bought this off of Amazon. Now I think the name of this is Zacato. I bought it in the matte, but you can also buy it in the glossy. So if you're interested in seeing how this turns out, keep watching the video. Now the stickers that I want to make tonight are in Creative Fabrica. So I'm going to click on my profile and look at my downloads. And the file that I want to download is right here. Let me show you what it looks like. It has all these super cute little stickers in it. Now I don't want to make all of these, but I do want to make a few of them. So I'm going to go ahead and say download. And then now that that's in my downloads, what I'll do is I'll open my download folder and I'll drag it to my desktop. And now I can go ahead and close that out. Now I'll open Cricut Design Space and notice I'm in the beta version. So I'm trying out the version where you can do the larger print than cut. If you want to do that, the way you get to the beta version is you click right here. You go to settings and then you can pick the regular version or the beta version. So I'll say done. Now I wouldn't have had to do that. I just was showing you where to find it. So I'm going to say new project. Then I'll say upload, upload image. Now the thing that I brought in from Creative Fabrica, it's in a file. Let me show you. You cannot just drop a whole file onto here. That's what happens. So I'll say cancel and then I'll go ahead and double click on the file and here's all of my options. Let's go ahead and drag this down. I'm going to say upload, upload image. Then I can click right here and let's see which ones do I want. Let's see if I can drag in more than one at a time. We'll click on that one, hold command down, add the carrots, just drag it onto the canvas. All right, so one of them came in. Let's see if the carrots will pop up automatically after this. Now I like to use complex, so I'll click on that and I'll say continue. All right, so there it is. I'm just gonna say apply and continue. And then I'm doing this as a print and cut. So I click on this side and say upload. Now, are those carrots gonna pop up? No, they are not. So I'm gonna to have to do each one that I want individually. So I'll say upload. So I'll drag the carrot up and I go through the same process. Select complex, continue, apply and continue, and then select the print and cut side. I'm gonna do two more of these just like that and then we'll move on. Now I had to do it that way because each one of these images was its own separate file in that folder. Sometimes you bring in sticker files and all the stickers are on one page. I wasn't that lucky. So I'm going to click on this, hold command down, select all four of those, and then I'll say add to canvas. Now these can be used for anything, pillows, coffee cups, or in my case stickers. And so they came in huge. Right now they're all grouped together and they're the width of 25.81 inches. Let's go ahead and change that right now. Let's just go with five and see what I get. Because the proportions are locked when I hit enter, the height will change also. Okay, so five inch stickers is gonna be way too big for me. So let me go ahead and select all of those and I'll just drag this and I'll check the size. I want them more like, you know, two inches. Okay, well, look there. That looks like a great size for me, but I don't want every little thing in here cut out. So what I need to do now is go up to offset. And right now it's set at 0.25. That's going to be way too big. And I said it was way too big. It's not all that too big, but I am going to make it smaller. Let's go with 0.15 and see what I get. Now what I did is I clicked 0.15 and then I hit return on my keyboard. 
it switched it to see what it would look like if I'm happy with it. I click apply. Now I want the back of it to be white. So you go right up here and change it. But you can change it to any color you want. Pink wouldn't be bad. But I just want the backgrounds to be white. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'll hit offset. It's still on the 0.15. It just defaults to the last thing that you used. Now, I don't think this beta version likes me so much. I've sat here for a long time. Wait, oh, all right. So that finally did it. So I'll say apply. Once again, it came in black. So I'll just click on white. Okay, so here's what I wanted to show you about this file over here. And for purposes of being able to see it, let's go ahead and change that offset to a darker color. Let's go ahead and put it back to black. Okay, see the holes in it? So with that offset selected, I don't even have contour as an option. I find that strange. So here's what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to offset it again with a little bit larger offset. So instead of 0.15, let's try 0.2. Now it's at point two, and those holes went away, so I'll say apply. Then I can go back and change that to white. Okay, so I want to go ahead and go to each of these, and then I want to say flatten. That way it becomes one layer, and I can do the whole thing as a print and cut. And so I'm going to do that with each of my items. And then I want two of each sticker. So I'll select the whole thing. And then I could either duplicate, but for me it's faster to use my keyboard. So Command C for copy, Command V for paste. And now I'm ready to make it. So I just click on make it. Now at this point, if I want to move these apart some, I can. There's really no reason to, because Cricut knows how much space it needs. And so in that case, I'll go ahead and just click Continue. Now I'm going to say Send a Printer, and then I'm going to choose the printer I want. Now because the background or the offset of mine is white, and I'm using white paper, I really don't need a bleed, but I just leave that on. Then I want to use the System Dialog for my printer. Now I'm going to say print, and a lot of the times what happens is your dialogue's going to be back behind here. Okay, I just saw it pop up. Okay, so I'm using 8.5 by 11. I'm printing in color. I want to go ahead and select media type, and I'm going to go to best quality. Now everything else is fine, so I'll say print. Then I'll go ahead and let that print. Now because of the high quality that I selected, it took about three minutes to print this out. Now look how pretty these colors are. I think that turned out beautiful. So the next thing that you need to do is you need to put your print and cut sheet on your mat and it goes in the left top corner. Now that that's printed out, it's time to go ahead and pick the material. So I'm going to click on Browse All Materials, and then I'm going to just type in here Sticker. Then I'm going to pick this printable sticker paper, And then one thing I want to do is, I want to go ahead and add more pressure. It might dig into my mat just a little bit. We're going to find out. So at this point, my machine's flashing. I have my fine point blade in. I made sure it was clean, so I'm ready to cut this. So with the print and cut, the first thing the machine does is it looks for all those black marks in the corners. And in my case, it seemed like it did it a few times. 
Those help it figure out where to cut. So after it was finished cutting, I lifted the mat because I wanted to see if the cut was good. It was, so I went ahead and ejected the material. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this. Now, y'all have those little spatula tools from Cricut or Off Brands, and you wondered what in the world will I ever use that for? I'm hoping it comes in handy with this. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and just pull off this excess paper. And you might have to hold your sticker down. Or you can let it lift up with it if it's lifting up, but I don't like mine to curl. So I want to hold it down and take it off later. Now I can see my bottom layer didn't cut quite all the way through there. I thought by adding that more pressure that was going to help. All right, so that cut fine in most places, but I can refine my settings. I can do little test cuts. I can just use this and do little test cuts and see where's the perfect setting. Those are so cute. Look how vibrant those are. Here's what I want to do. Pull my mat back a little bit. Not so much that it actually breaks. And then I'm just going to push this under it. Again, I don't really want to pull these off and curl them. Perfect. So, so cute. Now, I have barely made stickers before, so I'm very new to this. If you have a better way to do this, please let me know. Okay, remember this is the one we had to do the larger offset, and I realized afterwards I probably could have just put a circle or something where those holes were and then welded it to it. I think I'll give that a try and see if that works because I don't love having this big offset. I'm really graceful at this, aren't I? <laughs> now this is cutting through the front and the back. You can also do the kiss cut method where you just cut through the top layer and then the bottom layer, so the lining of the sticker, stays in one piece, so it's all intact. And the benefit of those is it's easier to peel your sticker off that backing than it is when you cut them all the way out. What I have found when you cut stickers all the way out, for me the easiest way to get the backing off is flip it over, use your nail, and peel up. Kind of have it even with the table. If you try to do it up in the air, it's not nearly as easy. But the way I just showed you, for me that is super easy. So there's a few stray pieces of backing that I need to cut off. I can pretty much pull them off. These are going to my little great nieces. They're not going to care if there's a little bit of extra, but I'll go ahead and clean them up before I send them. There's another little piece there. So again, not the perfect cut, but I'll get there. Now here's one of each of the stickers. I love these colors. I love these little designs. They're gorgeous. So thanks so much for watching the video. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section. And if you found anything helpful or just even entertaining, please give me a thumbs up. I also love to hear your comments. Thanks again, and until my next video, bye-bye. So I was thinking about this after I finished the video. And remember on the carrots how I had the gaps in the offset and I wanted to get rid of those, so I just made the offset larger? I thought of another way. Now it takes just a little bit more work, but it might fit your needs better. Let's go ahead and demonstrate on this carrot. So I need to unflatten that. And then I probably need to, nope, it's already ungrouped. So I'm going to pick the offset right over here. 
and go ahead and drag that off. All right, so using this image or using this design, I'm gonna go ahead and say offset. And then this time I want a really small one. Let's just go with 0.1. Now that's what it was. So that big offset was doing the 0.25. It was just trying to get caught up. So now we went to 0.1 and you see those gaps in there. Here's another way you can fix those. First of all, let's go ahead and apply it. And then I'll drag my carrots off. Now remember, you can't fix it using contour because contour is not available for this offset. So another thing I thought of was go to shapes, go to circle or whatever shape you want. And then you can just move this down on here. You could either do a second circle or if I go up here and unlock that, then I can just drag it so it covers both of those. Then I can just take my cursor, select both, hit combine and say weld. Let's bring that to the top. Now I wouldn't keep it black because it makes it hard to read, but I wanted you to see, look how much smaller that is. 